Today's interview is with Khaled from Cricket Fanatics magazine. It's a South African magazine that um, only started about six to eight months ago and it talks about cricket from a fan's perspective. Khaled will talk us through um, the, how he got involved in sport and how he got involved in right, doing the magazine. On the other side, Khaled also talks about the business side of sport and the business side of, of his magazine, how during the coronavirus he had to change his magazine around, he had to change his formula and he had to add and adapt to the new times and add new content. It's interesting to see how he grows his company within this, this very limited period, or this, 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 this period where we can't actually do very much because of the lockdown. Tell us about yourself and how you got involved in sports journalism. Hi, Sean. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, first of all, um, thank you for everybody that is supporting Sean, etc., and continue to do so because he's doing amazing work, um, amazing, amazing work, amazing platforms, and he's always had this, this vision that I really enjoyed. So thanks for this and thanks for doing this for the future. It's, it's brilliant. So, yeah, talk about me. I'm not a person that likes to, but uh, <laughs> I saw an internship at SA Cricket Magazine, and that's where I kind of started with SA with um, regards to sports journalism. Um, I saw the internship, I applied, I actually didn't get it at first. Um, <laughs> they called me back for a, a second time, and then I, yeah, and then everything was easy from there. Um, I was an intern for a while and then became a content producer and kind of did majority of the digital media for, for Aesthetic Mag. Yes, I did do some articles for the print magazine as well, but I was predominantly on the, on the digital side of things. Um, then after that, I decided, okay, um, I'm going to start my own thing and um, I'm going to start my own channel where it is different because the way journalism is and the way sports journalism is, journalism is there's a lot of pressure with regards to um, getting out stories, controversial stories, et cetera, et cetera, and to find the next story and constantly be on news all the time and, and all of those things, which is great. And there's a place for, in the market for anything. But I thought that there was a, a niche market for me to be able to basically open up a new sort of platform and a new sort of content that, that hasn't been around or is not around in the industry at the moment. So I started Cricket Fanatics magazine, kind of a spin-off from my United Fanatics magazine that I had before in Manchester United, where it was all about the fans, it's by the fans, it's for the fans, it's uh, a place where players can get closer to the fans and fans can get closer to the players, etc. And also, it's an opportunity for young cricketers, new cricketers, cricketers that don't get exposure to be able to get exposure in the industry. So I thought that starting Cricket Fanatics magazine is a place where fans can have their own opinions and fans can have their say because I feel that there's not enough out there for fans to actually speak about their feelings and what they feel about cricket and, and be um, accredited as someone, people of authority because um, a fan says something and then you kind of get those chirps on Oh, but you're a fan. What do you know? You never play the game. And I feel that that's a bit harsh. Um, you can see the same sort of things in cricket coaching. <laughs> I mean, certain people say, but you never play the game at a high level. How do you know what you're talking about? And I, and I think that there needs to be a balance in both. I think there's a place for both. And I think there's a place for everything in this industry. So I kind of started Cricket Fanatics magazine with the intent of that. And obviously, the future goals are obviously to to take that further and expand it as much as possible. Well, I mean, now during the lockdown, you've had to change the way you do your business, the way you do, your, you create your content. Uh, what changes have you done um, to create the content? Yeah, so <laughs> predominantly because you're a magazine, you have to do pretty articles. So obviously you have to do written content. A lot of the time that content comes from matches and covering matches and covering and doing interviews on the ground, going to training sessions, finding exclusive stories, etc. So when lockdown happened, it cancelled out all that content opportunities. And those are the kind of the content opportunities that keep things ticking over so that you never become you never without any content. You never have a stale day or a stale week. So those were the kind of things that were in control controlled by Cricket South Africa of course and franchises and, and clubs, etc. But it had a lot to do with what matches were on, what events were on, all of those type of things. So we are, us as a media house, we are trying to also help other people and events, promote their events through our business as well. So because at the end of the day, everybody's looking for, for a place 
to connect with fans and it's the fans that are, are the money makers at the end of the day. So we try to build the authority um, platform for people to be able to come to and say, okay, cool, look here, um, you've got a fan database. We'd like to reach a fan database. Can we get in contact with you? Can we promote with you? Can you come do media coverage for us, etc.? So we'll be doing a lot of those things going um, in the future, which, is, which you, we can talk about a little bit later. But um, um, going back to your, to your question, um, with regards to Click Fanatics magazine and um, the, the content strategy and the lockdown, there was three days where I went without sleep before the lockdown was announced, thinking about how am I going to create content that is fun for fans, that is insightful for cricketers, that will keep cricketers happy as well and be able to allow them to also express their feelings and express what they are thinking and what their goals are. And also I thought that it would be a good learning process for young cricketers in the country to learn from the heroes for, for change. Because we know that interviews with top players, it's difficult to get them. Um, they're always busy, the schedules are so busy. So I came up with an idea of the On Lockdown series. And it started off on Instagram Live. Um, I thought that maybe that's where the young kids are hanging out. So uh, <laughs> let's go to that platform and start talking on Instagram Live. But then I ran into a bit of an issue with regards to downloading the videos. So downloading, there the are options out there, but they're all lengthy options for me to be able to make it presentable to republish them, obviously, afterwards, after the feed is done. So then I dabbled into a few other things. I tried Zoom. And then again, I was like, okay, cool, Zoom is awesome. But I want to live stream. I want to make this interactive with fans in the now. I don't want to, I want them to feel natural as possible. I want them to see the plays in the natural habitat. And that's why I wanted the live aspect. So I started the live stream on, on Facebook and YouTube. But because of obvious, obvious reasons, I thought that I'm going to make YouTube my main video platform for now. And everybody can, if they want to go to our channels to watch video content and binge, it's nice to do it on YouTube where there's, where there's obviously playlists and categories. And it's, I know that people spend a lot of time on YouTube. I mean, I think that if you had to choose between Facebook and YouTube, people would rather go to YouTube for longer format videos than Facebook. Uh, I guess Facebook is more for, although people do do it and it is very successful there. I just, I just decided rather to do YouTube because I really want to grow the YouTube channel because at least then for every single type of content that I produce that's video content wise, our YouTube channel can really grow. So um, that's what I decided to do is the Unlockdown series. And then following that, I said, I need to create something that still involves the fans. So yes, the fans ask questions um, they, in the comment section for the Unlockdown series. But then I said, I need to do something that's all about the fans. So I got in, in touch with one of my buddies that is helping me out with Click Fanatics magazine as well. Um, he's one of the contributors on the site. And I got in touch with him and we had a chat about it. And we started the Sunday podcast. So on a Sunday evening at 8, 8 p.m., it's a Sunday video podcast. It's a, it's a different type of thing. We'll be going with video podcasts instead of audio podcasts. I think that we will, down the line, put that same audio files up on a podcast for audio as well. But I think for now, just we're going to do the video side of things. And that's a, where we discuss different topics in South African cricket that we think are interesting. And that's what it was about. So with regards to regard to video content, and obviously naturally when you focus your mind on something, on one, on a different thing, you kind of um, take your foot off the paddle with something else. And um, I had to rethink the whole content strategy because as you know, I don't know if you, if you I know you follow the, the content quite um, closely and you would have seen, we produced a lot of content every single day. And it's just, it's just, I felt that it was too much for, for, for viewers to handle. I wanted to create, I want to create a customer experience that is, that is easy and fun to be around, that they're not looking at their feed and just bombarded by content. And, and I, I don't want to do, I want quantity, I want quality more than quantity, actually. Um, we can get into this, into the speed role and we can get into this, um, and the bandwagon of just posting anything that we can and just any nonsense that we can find and just to get clicks to the site and, I don't want to be in that, um, I don't want to be formulated in that category or be clustered amongst those, those sites that do that. So I decided to do something a little more different and structure the content a lot more. So we have two sections on our website called insights and opinions, um, fan opinions and insights. So insights are for people that, for our writers that 
have written for quite a bit some time. You know, they've written in two, three years in the industry. They've, they've already worked in the industry. They know a little bit about journalism or they study journalism. They might have other jobs now, um, but they have studied journalism and, and they know a bit about cricket and they've watched cricket for a long time. And then I've got the fan opinion section for fans that just want to express their views on the topic. So I've, I've split that up over, over the week. And also we have features. So that's when our writers go out and they'll go have a chat with one of the cricketers and tell their stories. Um, we're doing that. And we also have the great debate, which is on a Wednesday, where, pe- where we have two of our writers compete against each other, basically in a topic, a written topic. So for example, um, we've had one where Quinton, we, whether Quentin de Kock should drop the gloves or not at the test level, or he should, whether he should captain or not, things like that. So. Um, yeah, so that's how our content is, is basically laid out. And then obviously on a Monday, we have our weekly magazine, um, which is kind of like a newsletter, PDF newsletter, where we, not really, actually, it's actually a mini magazine, to be, uh, to be correct. Um, it's not a PDF, it's actually directly, when you open up the link to your email, you can read it within the email, basically. And so you don't have to click through and download and do all of other things, you read it immediately. Um, where we update you basically on the, the top stories that happened in the last week. And we kind of give you a little peek into the future of what's, that, what's to come. So I know that there's a lot of readers that, that aren't um, at their computers or on their phones all the time, and they can might lose um, some content. They might miss a feature or miss a video that they haven't seen. So the, the weekly show, the weekly magazine is kind of a, a periodical that, on a weekly basis that can keep you up to date on what we've been publishing and what we've been up to. So yeah, that's lockdown. That was my lockdown thoughts. And you can hear that my mind was running and racing. <laughs> yeah, I quite, um, quite enjoy your emails that come through and that you, you don't spam us with emails. We don't get emails every single day, but um, you get it for it's once a month, the highlight of what's happened in the month. And the, it, it actually, so if I've missed anything, I can always go back and click on it and go and see what I've missed out on and stuff. So. I've actually enjoyed that that side of things. Um, okay, so now, because of lockdown and because you're quite close to cricket, actually, first, let me ask you, in your interview section, what kind of, you said you've interviewed some youngsters, but you also interviewed some of the um, journalists, you've interviewed some of the bigger kind of people. Who have you actually interviewed so far? Just a couple of names. Mm. Okay, cool. So it's, it's difficult for me to single, single out all of them because that every single one of them was great. Um, but I'll have to pick the ones that really, really move me because obviously some of them I've heard these stories before. So some, okay, to give you a brief overview for the cricket lovers of, we've done Lance Klusner, which is kind of a highlight from a legend's point of view, Ashley Prince, Vinnie Barnes. And then from a domestic point of view, we've done guys like um, Grant Rulofsson, Eddie Moore, obviously Kyle Verena, Zubair Hamza, all the guys that you guys know. We're going to try to get more Proteus players, so we've had Andrew Nokia, who really sat down and was really really open with us and honest with us, which we haven't seen him in, I don't think we've seen him in that light before. And um, I did the Janssen Twins yesterday, which was an interesting one about how they motivate each other. But we've also done some some um, well-known sports journalists. Um, I've done Nick, Neil Mantorp, and I've done um, also Pommy and Barnwell, who's a sports presenter, which you guys know for Super Sport. Um, but the, the one that really stood out to me is Denisha, the new under-19 women's coach. Uh, I thought that her story was phenomenal. Um, um, I, I know I say it quite a bit, but I think the way that she spoke to me about how she has progressed in cricket and how she stayed focused and her passion and and it just basically eradicated or just destroyed anything single stereotype that you would have had about women in cricket and women in sport. Because for, for a long time, I've been trying to keep promotion as much as possible to the women's game. So also on the lockdown series, we've had Faye Tunnicliffe and we've had Sunil Lewis. Faye's interview was phenomenal about the way our thinking processes and um, her relationship with, 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 with Claire and um, the, how Claire has actually molded that Western Province team into something very special. And, and Faye's training methods and what she's been doing during lockdown is actually an inspiration to men and women in cricket. Um, Sunay Lewis is um, interesting media was interesting um, she let me know about that and so those are some of the, the interviews that we have done um, we're going to continue with them um, we're going to as soon as we get them obviously it's not going to be on a daily basis as much as possible we'll get to do as many as possible we want people to also be really involved with our um, things that we are doing with regards to 
picking teams, fantasy teams, etc., like that, um, on online as well to get them involved in, in those conversations as well. And um, so, those are some of the names that we've, yeah, that we've had on the show. Just for the people listening on, if you want to find out who Claire is, she's a bit of a cricket fanatics uh, favorite. Um, there's a lot of content from her. She provides the most amazing insight into cricket, into women's cricket, but also into sport and kids' development cricket. She's an amazing person, an amazing coach, and got a, a huge cricket brain. She's, yeah. I mean, you've, you've interviewed her, I don't yeah. know how many times, and <laughs> every single time you've interviewed her, she's given you something different to talk, to think about and to talk about and to you know, giving you insight into different aspects of cricket. Um, I think Claire's one of the true unsung heroes of, of cricket. She's amazing. She really is. She really, really is, yes. <laughs> so then, uh, so now, I mean, that's your business and how your business has changed um, during the lockdown. But uh, post the lockdown, do you see any changes happening in firstly school cricket, then like domestic cricket, and finally in international cricket? Yeah, so it's, it's funny. Because as Cricket Fanatics magazine, we were just about to concentrate more on the club scene and the school scene and do more content that is um, start actually people. So to those that don't know out there, events, guys that are running school events, guys that are running club events, etc. They can contact us um, and we will obviously do events coverage for them because we want to be able to do events coverage for as many people as possible. Okay, yes, because our time is limited, there's, there's certain prices for it, but um, it's, not, it's not so much that it's going <laughs> to keep you and leave your pockets empty. <laughs> it's just that so that we can get the staff involved that we need to be able to fully cover the event as best as possible. Um, with obviously, with everything that's happening, we have to cover pro tiers, women's, um, women's pro tiers, men's pro tiers, um, domestic cricket, uh, there's, there's school cricket, there's so much, so much events that's happening all the time, so we kind of pull into multiple different types of directions. But with regards to that in post-lockdown, I think it's going to affect it, affect it massively, because first of all, we don't know when this lockdown is going to end. So the longer it, it goes on for, the, more, uh, the less opportunities for people, I feel, to show their talent. So especially for those guys that could have played under 19 cricket, they're going to miss that opportunity because the, and, and they're going to have to have a different way to actually showcase their talent when, when cricket comes back to, to, to reality again and starts performing the way we wanted to perform and start rolling again. So I think international cricket-wise, I don't think the international cricket will be impacted from a fan's perspective and from a supporter's perspective, I think as soon as international cricket people start swarming to games again. I just think from a financial point of view, I think the, the um, major franchises and the major clubs and etc. are going to lose a lot of money. And I think that the media companies are going to suffer the most because the less media companies there are, the less coverage we're going to get. So I think that um, from that perspective, it's going to affect it. Um, and obviously, from with regards to keeping players sharp, I think that period of them coming back into cricket again and playing professionally, and I think they're going to take some time to, to obviously oil up and get, <laughs> get ready and oil up those joints and to, to be back to their very best. And within the business side of sports, so, I mean, you've mentioned some part, like with the media suffering and things, but... Um, there must be some opportunities that might actually open up now that um, once the coronavirus finishes, because I mean, some sponsorships have dropped off, so that creates opportunities. But give it a different outlook as to how you can actually approach um, like a sponsorship or, or some kind of business without, behind sport. Okay, yeah. So you can look at the examples that we have done. So, so recently we launched an academy, a cricket academy, online academy called... Um, our first one is Wicked Keeping Academy. So it's an Ezra Pool's Wicked Keeping Academy. So we give an opportunity to people to get involved and get in contact with us, obviously, to help them during the speed it and help them after the speed it to go digital. So with all of those type of things, we're trying to create opportunities for others to, to launch their own businesses and to get themselves online and to help themselves um, deal with a crisis like this. Because I think everybody was taken aback and no one was prepared. And I think that was the biggest part of it that really struck people and really affected people because it was a sudden change of a complete change in lifestyle, complete change in behavior, complete change in everything. Um, 
So business opportunities wise, I think digitally, if you can get your company digital in some way or other, um, it will help you to be able to survive in these, in these times, no matter what. Because I mean, I don't think, I think majority of people have access to some sort of digital content. I think majority of the world has it somewhat. Um, has access to that type of content. So I think that is probably the best way for you to do it. Um, I think follow your passions. Um, start, this is amazing what you're doing now um, with regards, this is a good example as well. Get involved with video content more, um, online videos, uh, maybe start a start a YouTube channel or something and get your, get your content out there and just communicate and build an audience. I think that's the best thing that you can do now during this lockdown period because sponsorships, I don't think, I don't know if that's an opportunity for people to um, really f focus on that alone. I think there's, there's loads of other things and ideas that you have to speak about and think about. And I don't have all the answers. I'm still fighting through them and I'm trying to find my own um, paths and what's working and what's not working. Um, I'm very, I'm very young in this industry still. So I'm still trying to, figure my own self and I learn as I go along basically. So yeah, that's, that's the advice, a little bit advice that I can give. I think one of the important parts is that if you do get out there and do do something, um, you, you need a proper strategy for it. So like you've got your dad that, that's helping people with their strategy, we're building websites, um, getting followers, getting people involved so they can, can contact your dad or from my side, we can do the social media content for people and proper social media strategy and stuff. But it's nice to have a proper strategy in place that you can follow towards something because um, as you're saying a bit earlier on, a lot of people are doing this spray out there and hoping that people are going to get the content. But if you've got a proper strategy where things come in at a certain time and place, um, people know what to expect and then you actually end up tra attracting a lot more people to your, your digital platforms. Mm -hmm. 100% and I think that is the way to go forward. Cool. So then for you, what are the, what's in the pipeline? What's coming up, coming up soon? Okay, cool. So um, I'm not going to reveal all my secrets away, but <laughs> no. Um, so in the pipeline, they are, we, we're just trying to do things in a different manner. So we obviously have, um, we're going to continue this lockdown series, of course. Um, I'm going to try to, I'm trying to get in contact with there's any um, freelance um, videographers out there or guys that are doing video, video editing, etc. You guys can get in contact with me um, if you want to do something and want to start a hobby and have your, your content seen out there. Um, I want to start doing that sort of longer format content, um, like documentaries, etc. Um, we are, we are going to be, able, there's like a, a lot of different types of things that we, from a content perspective that we want to try to give you guys and um, keep you guys um, obviously involved and insightful knowledge that you can stay with us. We're going to continue the debate. I think I've mentioned most of the stuff that we are going to be doing now. So we, the, the great debate, of course, um, the, our podcasts um, are going to be are, are really taking off at the moment. I think it's that, that that's a new thing in the pipeline that we're really excited about um, on Sunday night at 8 p.m. Obviously, South African time. Um, we will be bringing guests on, um, obviously from overseas as well, to talk about. Like last week, we had what can we learn about England, and from England, the way England set up, what can South Africa learn about that? And we brought on a guy from England called Cricket Connoisseur, who is like Instagram, who is an Instagrammer that's doing really well for himself and really has great insights into English cricket and world cricket. Um, so we brought these insights into what South Africa can learn from England with regards to domestic cricket as well as international cricket. Um, this Sunday, um, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to talk about um, a little bit more about what franchise cricket and SAA, um, especially who, the, who are the next in line for SAA and what is that SAA team going to look like. Um, and yeah, so those are the things. we got new writers. We're excited that there's new writers getting involved and getting on board as well that want their content to be seen. So there's a lot of new content that, that is out there for you guys to see. And obviously the Academy. We're really excited about the Wiki Keeping Academy. Um, it's about finding the, that market though, that niche, because Wiki Keeping is already niche. Cricket's already niche as a, as a sport in the world, I feel. And I think that Wiki Keeping Academy, finding that right niche. So if you're a young Wiki Keeper, and during lockdown is actually the perfect time if you have a little space in your backyard um, 
you can do this course. It's, it's online, it's video content, it's online, and you can do it right now. All you need is a family member or a friend. And even if you don't, you can do it by yourself. Um, it's obviously, you'll be learning from the best, possibly the best wicket keeping coach in the country, or one of the best is in the country. And um, he's coached the likes of Kyle Verena, he's coached the likes of um, Faye Tannicliffe. Um, um, He's, he's worked with a lot of the up-and-coming wicket keepers in obviously the SWD region, the Eastern Cape region, and the Western Province region. So, um, a very good cricket coach um, and a very good wicket keeping coach. I mean, it's the perfect opportunity for those guys to get involved. And we're looking obviously forward to working with you guys. If anybody else wants to do start their own academies and online academies, they can come to us as well and have a chat to us, and we'll try to help them out and try to set something up for them. So yeah, um, those are the things that are kind of in the pipeline at the moment. Yeah, it'd be nice because I mean it's not limited just to South Africa. So if people want to actually um, create their, their their academies from overseas, or if they actually want to provide content, or want to be content providers from elsewhere around the world, they can always contact you. And um, uh, naturally, they've got to fall within your your um, your bigger vision. But um, they've got to understand your vision or what you want to do. But there is opportunities for other people around the world to actually um, contribute to your site. Yeah. And then, so how do people get hold of you? Okay, cool. So there's multiple ways. Um, let's start with email is the easiest probably. So the easiest email for you guys to get the quickest response is cricketfanaticsmag at gmail.com. I think that's the easiest way for you guys to get hold of me. And then obviously our social media platforms. So we have Facebook, Cricket Fanatics Magazine, Instagram, Cricket Fanatics Mag. And Twitter, Click Fanatics Mag, because we couldn't get Cricket Fanatics Mag for some reason. It was too long. So we had to go with Click Fanatics Mag. <laughs> but you'll find us, if you type in Cricket Fanatics Magazine, you'll find us on Twitter as well. YouTube, Cricket Fanatics Magazine as well. So on all those platforms, we're on every single platform. You can contact us at any time if you want to talk about anything.